Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul, and at the moment I'm in St. Paul on location at the Because Conference. Welcome to Buy Cities, a program by, for, and about the Buy Plus community and our friends and allies. And we are now have, we've now been on the air for 20 years, so this is our 20-year anniversary. We are also online forever now in the University of Minnesota Gene Treader Collection archives, and we will have information on the show where you can go to that archive and see any of our 302 episodes that are currently housed there. There will be more to come, but they now have the largest buy video collection in the world, and we have been a part of that. So uh, thank you for being here. If you're not familiar with Bi Cities, again, we're the longest running show in the history of the world on bisexuality or bi plus sexuality. We have more episodes, you know, I'm gonna span the ages here, more episodes than Roy Rogers and Trigger, more episodes in The Sopranos, more episodes in Cagney and Lacey. They've got the Emmys, we've got the longevity. So anyway, welcome. And the Because Conference is in its 30th year, and that conference was originating in the Twin Cities or the Bi Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and is a regional conference on bisexuality. So another force that has contributed to bi visibility and the bi community. Today in this interview, I'm really happy to um, interview Sirius Chessmore. And Sirius is the co-chair of this year's Because, and this is the first time they have co-chaired it. So Sirius, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. It's lovely to be here. Yeah. I've seen you running around as co-chairs do. <laughs> You've yes. been feeding us. You've been running with snacks. You've been making the coffee. You made this conference work. So. Wow, you're just everywhere. And before you even became the co-chair, you said you used to work the kitchen at Because, right? Yeah, I've done a lot of kitchen work. In fact, I've, I've missed a lot of really cool workshops because because uh, I'm in the kitchen. So. <laughs> so do you get to go to any of them now that you're the co-chair? Uh, I did get to see one by Erica today okay. uh, about reclaiming faith. So oh, that was okay. really cool to go to. Yeah, that's good to have that, because sometimes that's missing in the queer community, isn't it? Certainly. Yeah, because we've been so damaged by organized religion, if you will. Exactly. Claim our faith and not throw the baby out with the bathwater mm -hmm. is important. So good, good presentation, was it? It was wonderful, yes. Good. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad you got to get out of the kitchen. Me too. Out <laughs> to the workshop. But what, what's it been like to be the co-chair? This is your first rodeo as the co-chair. Well, talk about it. It's definitely been overwhelming, yeah. um, harsh learning curve, oh. especially stepping into the the big shoes that were uh, Camille and Colleen have been running this for I don't even know how many years, um, and they built up this wealth of knowledge and connections, and um, were very self sufficient. Didn't need so much of the volunteer, you know, uh, help and. Uh, it's definitely, it's been a big job trying to step into their shoes, so. Oh. Well, you know, it's not for the faint-hearted. And the mm -hmm. fact that you did it, you know, uh, if anything can go wrong with stuff, it does. Yes. You know, I've been, I've been doing telehealth in my work for two and a half years, and there's always something that goes wrong with the technology or this or that, or, you know, mm -hmm. so. So you took on a huge project, yeah. and you made this happen. Yeah, and we're taking a lot of notes for next year. Yeah. So we're really excited. We're really looking forward to 2023. I think that's when we're going to realize our vision for um, for what we were hoping to do for Because. Yeah. So this is an essential conference to our community. It's There's nothing else like it around. Um, so we really want to do right by it. So. And you are. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us about who's here other than by cities and you and I right now. Who's who's at the conference set? Um, well, my family to All right, start okay. with. All right. um, and you just had a baby, right? Yeah, yeah. Through all of this time where you're trying to organize a yep. conference. I was uh, experiencing all of the classic first trimester uh, sickness things last year, doing last year's Because oh. Conference, and uh, had my baby in May. And <laughs> been balancing that uh, we became uh, sort of homeless about a month into oh, having the baby oh. so that was it's been an exciting summer oh, um, it. but um, we have some past presenters uh, 
who have who have worked with Because Before, who came back. Um, we're really excited to have them. Um, we have Robin Oaks, yes. um, who is you know very important person to our bi community, of course. Um, Denary Grace and uh, Dr. Lulu are some of our guest speakers. We'll be hearing from Dr. Lulu tomorrow. Okay, will she be Zoomed into the meeting? Because yep, this is hybrid, it's both in person and- Yep, yep, so Robin Oaks was our in-person uh, workshop all conference presenter, and then Denary Grace and uh, Dr. Lulu are both being Zoomed in, so. Talk a little bit about Denary. Some people may or may not know her, but obviously a very yeah, she is a very important BIPLUS activist. Um, she does a lot of uh, work with the, like for the fat community. She's very vocal about um, especially intersectionalities mm -hmm. in her identity and how they all tie together. Um, she's just a really cool, well-rounded person. I don't even know what to say about her necessarily because as we were going through her different workshop titles, yeah, yeah. They, they were all over the place. They were, it was really cool. Well, um, I remember seeing the, the bio information on her on the website for Because, mm -hmm. and she is an out by proud, fat, black, you know, has big smile so you can see the gap in her teeth. I mean, you know, so she's out and loud and proud. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I think she had a little doggy. Or maybe oh, a big doggy, because when she was being zoomed in, yeah, to the she conference. had to like, hey, don't, don't be biting that or something. We was <laughs> yeah. grabbing on something they weren't supposed to. Yeah, so. I mean, we couldn't see it, but we knew its presence was there. The little four-legged, which are part of our families, aren't they? Yeah. In addition to the two-legged ones. Oh, certainly, I have a number of those myself. Oh, so. you do? Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody here does that. I'm aware of. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So Daenery and. Robin Oaks, and then tell us about Dr. Lulu. Lulu. Dr. Lulu. Yeah, um, so she is a pediatrician. She's a queer parent of um, queer youth. Yes, um, yes. She does. She has had a lot of like. She's she's very up and coming. She's done a lot of TED talks recently. Uh, she said she had an interview with Oprah, um, and she talks a lot about um, some of our most at risk. Um, communities in the queer community, especially like uh, BIPOC youth. Um, so we're really excited to have her as a part of this conference as well. And we're hoping we can rope her in for next year too. So yeah, yeah. this year she was willing to donate her services, oh. her, her time. Oh, that is awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, so tell me, what's been the best part about being the co-chair? Uh, finally getting some connections in the community. You know, by necessity doing this work, I have to meet a lot of really cool people who are active and and um, working for our community. And uh, it's not something I had before. So I'm, I'm really enjoying networking um, and, and making those connections. Um, so you get to meet people like Robin Oaks and mm -hmm. Daenery and Dr. Lulu, at least, you know, yep. connect with them. Yep, and I'm really looking forward to building those relationships further. So a lot of them are just introductions this year, but um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to expanding on that. So. Yeah. What other things are going on here at Because this year? You, know, you talked about some of the keynotes and the special guest speakers. Yeah, so one of the big things that we're working on um, is accessibility. Um, so uh, I don't think folks have had to utilize them, some of the things we put out this year as much, but things such as we have a quiet room, a low sensory room, uh, we've got a sound machine and uh, yoga mats and blankets and um, things like that. We've offered uh, free childcare in the past um, and uh, working with the building on like propping doors open um, so that folks who can't push open heavy doors. Oh, okay, um, all right, I noticed on the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, and yeah. of course, uh, our all gender bathrooms are yes. one of the most important things that we're able to do here in the Wellstone Center. Um, they do a lot to accommodate us, and we really yeah. appreciate it, so, yeah. Well, I don't dare ask you what the worst part has been, but maybe, <laughs> <laughs> but that you got through it. Yeah, yes. you're You're a survivor. Mm -hmm. I, again, really looking forward to this next year. I've learned so much, um, and I, I have so many 
so many thoughts on, on how we could do better, just things that we could do earlier and, and things I didn't know had to be done. And um, yeah. They say the devil's in the details, don't they? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we're finding that here as we're getting ready to. <laughs> and you know something we've really appreciated? Mm -hmm. That you gave us this room to do interviews. Sometimes we've done them in the hallways. I mean, you know, we, we go anywhere we, we make can. Make work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you've been very accommodating with us over the years, and we really appreciate that. Fantastic. I'm glad that you feel that way. <laughs> yeah. Are there other things you want us to know or the audience to know about Because? Uh, just we're definitely volunteer run. Um, you know, everything you see put forward was done by people who donated their time um, despite their own personal limitations. And um, it's, it's an important part of who we are is that we are by and of our by plus community, including our allies. Um, I feel like sometimes our allies can get pushed out of queer organizations. Uh -huh. um, and at because our allies are some of our most important people, we want our bi people to be able to attend the conference. Yeah. And we really rely on our allies to come help run it. So, yeah. Well, because you know, I probably didn't even say this in the intro, but this is like one of the premier, if not the premier, by conference mm -hmm. in the United States. Yes. Yep. And it's gone on for 30 years. Indeed. Yeah. I think there was a couple of years where it had to get dropped, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I need to show off my shirt because it's... <laughs> <laughs> Bisexual Empowerment Conference, a united supportive experience, 1993. I love that. This is the second year that Because was in existence. I don't think they had t-shirts the first year. I presented at the first one. Oh, so, that's awesome. What was your presentation, if you don't mind? By 101. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, by one. I think Scott Bartell is the person who did it with me. But I think this still happens to people. But when I first showed up at Because, I mean, I felt like a lone voice in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Nobody identified as bi. If you did, you were chastised. And the worst people were the lesbians. I'm going to say it out loud. Uh, they, they were cruel. Yeah. Not only dismissive, but cruel. And so it was kind of like, oh, and I show up at Because. Yeah. And it was like magical. Yeah, the bi magical. community has definitely been a safe haven for me. As, as a non-binary person, I've come up against a surprising amount of resistance um, in, in other queer circles, in, in uh, trans circles, surprisingly enough. Um, it's hard to find acceptance for who I am. Um, and there, there's nobody understands you know, intersectionality and, and, and nuances of identity like the bi plus community has been my experience. And beca coming to because is just another level of that. It's, it's been, even working in the kitchens, I, I have really benefited from the connection that I've been able to make with people here at this conference. How long have you been coming to because? Uh, not that long, since 2018. 2018. So, yeah. Do you feel comfortable talking a little bit about how you grew into your identity or accepted it or connected with it, lived it? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, well, the first time I knew that I liked people of multiple genders was in fourth grade when a girl in my class asked me if I would kiss her. Oh. And I said, I need to think about that. Can I get back to you later? Oh, you have boundaries, girl. You <laughs> had, did. yeah. I that, did. That's pretty good. Yeah. And I came back later and I was like, actually, I'd really like to kiss you. And she said, oh, that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? I was joking. I can't believe. And just like railed on me. Oh, and that's cruel. Um, yeah. And I went home crying and I was like, mom, I, I don't understand. Is this wrong? And she was like, I don't think so. Um, so you had a mom that was cool. Yeah, my mom is amazing. My mom is the chair of BOP, actually, this year. And oh, she yeah, is okay. downstairs running the kitchens right now. So your mom is Sarah Ann? Yes, Sarah Ann is my mother. It's your mother? Yeah. Oh, my goodness yeah. sake. Mm -hmm. Oh, so thank God you had Sarah Ann as a mom. Oh, thank God. Who said yeah. that there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And that you felt free to go home and say, ouch, that hurt. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's especially interesting because I grew up in the LDS church. Um, okay, all uh, right. 
which, like layman's terms, most people know as Mormon. Right, right. Um, and uh, she was still in that church at that time. So, um, but what the, our biggest value in the church was, um, as part of the church, what we took away from it was just acceptance and love for all. And that was her, I think, I think that's her core uh, being is acceptance and love. Um, and so that even, because I've heard not so good things sometimes about LDS and queer people. I mean, it's the, so acceptance and love for, I'm just checking with you. Yeah, so uh, the uh, institution, the actual, like, is, I don't know if saying is a monster is is too strong of a language. It's, it's not good. But um, the tenets but the, are good. The, the ones I've come across, okay. uh, the, a lot of the communities I've went through, um, which is mostly in Minnesota and Nebraska, the actual people are like, they just want to be of service to their neighbors. They maybe don't approve of or understand, you know, your way of life, but they, they've they kept to themselves about it for the most part, at least. Um, so they treat you well. Yeah, I, I we um, relied on the church for a long time after we left. Um, for they would give us food oh. um, when we were alone. Food. Oh. They uh, helped us move many times. Um, a lot, a lot of stuff like that. So I, I'm personally an atheist, but um, I got a lot of good stuff from the people of the church. Well, you know, there are different brands of religious organizations or whatever. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there are some people that give Christians a real bad name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and some that don't. So one of the things I like about LDS, and you can confirm this, I think I think it's true that you can go anywhere in the United States, and if you run into a difficulty, you can call anybody and just say, I need help. Oh, certainly. Yeah, right? yeah you know those really annoying, nagging, like, missionaries who come to your doorstep? Yeah, yeah. You could ask them to come help you, like, landscape your backyard if you're in the middle of a project. They're, and their job is to come help you. Their, their job as they go around is to help you first. So you heard so. it here on Bi Cities. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Next time they come in, you're in the shower, which is where I was last. I was Jehovah's <laughs> Witness. But anyway. But, yeah, no, I mean, that. I think that's a really beautiful thing about that, yeah. that th they are of service. I mean, they have the heart of a servant of a helper. Yeah. And and, and there's there's definitely a lot of a lot of badness in the church. Mm -hmm. Um but I I still have connect connections and some ties to that community just because they have so many good people. Yeah. yeah. So so you were in fourth grade and somebody wanted to kiss you. Where did things go from there? Because uh, from there, in between there and now. Well, so then it was pretty, you know, nothing exciting happened until I had a best friend in eighth grade who I just fell in love with. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I started asking my mom sneaky questions about like, is it okay if you are, because at the time I was still identified as a girl, sure, um, yeah, if, yeah. if you're a girl and you like other girls, but you keep having sleepovers with other girls, or is that against the rules? Like if you're attracted to people, is that when you can't have sleepovers with them? And um, got some, some answers on that that I, I honestly don't remember. Um, and then uh, I did end up having to come out as by to my parents because somehow those previous things hadn't clued them in. Okay. And I remember for some reason I was crying. Oh. I was crying, like worried that she was going to have an issue with it. This is despite the fact that she had joined a queer choir, was doing a whole bunch of like community work in the LGBT community. Um, but I was terrified that. And this was an eighth grader. Yep, yep. This was eighth grade going into ninth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, honey. Don't you know that your dad is bi? <laughs> what? There we go. So that was that was really cool. And after that, just the whole world opened up for me. I was able to explore my gender um, and the difference between romantic and sexual attraction. And um, I discovered that I am not built to be a monogamous person. Okay. Um, and um, the whole world opened up for me after I realized I was bi and came out as bisexual, so. So if it's okay to ask, you have a baby. Yes. Your first one. Uh -huh. And I, you had a partner or the, you had it done in other ways? So all your family is what I'm asking about, you know, who, oh. who do you? Who do I have as my family? Yeah, who's your family? Um, well, 
Uh, I don't mind my hands. Right now, I just have my one partner, okay. mostly because that's how it's wound up with COVID. Um, okay. And we have uh, two older kids, um, okay. who are nine and 11 years old. Um, she's had a couple of folks that she's seen off and on the last couple of years. Um, but um, I think the biggest part, so I don't know if you've heard of relationship anarchy. Uh, go ahead. It's, it's um, a lot of folks, not everyone, uh, will prioritize romantic relationships over other relationships. Um, relationship anarchy is saying um, that all of my relationships, th there's no hierarchy to them. Okay, like, yeah, um, yeah. So a big part of my relationship anarchy is um, my mom is my best friend. Uh, closest confidant. I'm pretty sure I'm hers as well. Uh -huh. um, and we have a very close relationship that sometimes disturbs other people. Um, we're, you know, very in tune with each other. Um, my friends take as much priority in my life as um, any, you know, romantic uh, partners. Um, just a, a lot of a lot of that. The last couple of years, I've been very closed off from people. Um, so because of COVID or just life? A mixture of COVID yeah. and just some personal health crises Aww. and um, such. Um, but I'm really looking forward to opening my circle back up this year, um, especially coming out of this conference. I've been so busy. I haven't had time to be a, a human being. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to opening back up again. How much of your time, I'm jumping back, has this conference taken? You know, if you look at a weekly? It's hard to put a time on it because I'm doing everything with my baby. Oh, my word. Okay. So it's, I could say that I spend all day, every day working on because, but yeah. probably 20 or 30 minutes of, you know, someone else's working on it has come out of it every time just because yeah. uh, I've been taking care of them. I also, uh, I don't drive. Oh, okay. I, walk and bus and um, just generally take public transit and I transport my kids to school um, and back and I do all the grocery shopping and so wow. just all of that running around um, I'm usually working on because oh. while I'm on the bus or, or uh, things like that so kind of impossible to put a time stamp yeah, on how yeah, much time I've yeah. spent on because so you have come to a place now personally and in the community. I mean, we're now you're the co-chair of Because. Mm -hmm. And you found your way with how you feel best as you. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? I feel incredibly fortunate. Um, I know a lot of people, my partner included, who weren't able to settle into or accept or find themselves until you know, a good long way into their adulthood. And um, I, feel, I feel I feel really settled into who I am and it feels good. It feels good. I'm really excited to be an organizer in something as important as because this is this is everything I've wanted for my life um, is, is to do something as important as this um, and be a part of something like this. So. You know, I want to thank you for being you because you now are giving other people out there hope and ideas about being authentically themselves. So thank you, and we need to wrap up. So thank you for being you, thank you for being on Bi Cities. Thank you for having me again. Sirius Chessmore, and I know we're gonna see more of you in the years to come. I sure hope. All right, would you join me in our signature goodbye? Yes. All right. Bye, Bye for, for now. now.